This is Campus News, reporting the top stories from colleges and universities. Next on Campus News. MSU Moorhead students joined others in the community for a special charity event. How a small community is making a big impact. MSU Moorhead blew past its expected fundraising goal, where the excess money is going, and how it will make campus feel like homecoming week all year long. Some high school students ditched class for a day to visit MSUM, why they put down the pencils and picked up the paintbrushes. After missing 14 days of playing because of COVID regulations, the MSUM men's and women's basketball teams are excited to hit the hardwood running. We'll tell you how they plan to rebound their seasons. Good morning and welcome to Campus News. I'm Jenna Scott. And I'm Eric George. Thousands of people from all around Fargo-Moorhead filled the Shields Arena to help feed children they'll never meet. Reporter Laura Hublin tells us how college students from our own community turned out to help. Sweet Caroline, ba, ba, ba. <laughs> Singing and dancing in hairnets while packing meals. This is Fargo Mobile Pack. Feed My Starving Children brought together groups from all around the community to pack thousands of meals over the course of just a few days. Fargo Mobile Pack Director Amy Oakson describes what volunteers did. After we packed these Manapack rice bags, which is rice, soy, vitamins, and veggies that they're packing in the bag, and then they're distributed to 70 countries around the world um, to those in need. This is the first time that Fargo Mobile Pack has gathered in one year. Due to the pandemic, the organization did a telethon last year to raise money for machine-packed meals, rather than hosting an in-person packaging event. And our hope is to pack over a million and a half meals while we're here. So this will be our biggest event that we will do this whole year since we've been back from COVID. MSU Moorhead is among 18 of the area schools and colleges that volunteer. MSU Moorhead campus chaplain Dominique Bucholtz says it's important that MSU Moorhead students know how to give back to the community. You get a lot done in a really short amount of time. You kind of line up in like an assembly line um, and crank out as much as you can together. So it's a team building experience. It's a chance to get to know people, um, a chance to use your bodies for service. Buchholz says that about 25 MSU Moorhead students signed up to volunteer. Sophomore Maya Kruger is one of the students that was a part of MSU Moorhead's team. I love volunteering, so I thought, why not? It's kind of like the perfect opportunity. Director Okasin says that volunteers often wonder if what they do makes a difference in the long run. People are like, oh, we're just taking two hours and a little, you know, 25 sets, what's the difference? Well, it means a difference between a child living or dying. Shifts were short, but people only had to volunteer a little of their time to make a big difference. With photographer Abby McKay, Laura Hovland, Campus News. By the end of the four-day event, Fargo Mobile Pack packed nearly one and a half million meals. MSU Moorhead students are encouraging their peers to recycle as part of a nationwide competition. The school is participating in the 2022 Campus Race to Zero Waste program. Millions of students are being asked to place recycling in bins around campus. At the end of each week, the recycling will be weighed and reported to an online scoreboard. The winning school gets bragging rights. The competition runs until March 26th. Members of the MSU Moorhead community will soon have a chance to speak up. Students, faculty, and alumni can raise their voices and inspire others with 10-minute talks centered around a single theme. This year's theme is the purpose of identity. Six speakers will touch on topics like racial stereotypes, digital presence, and intersectional identities. Live music will also be part of the event. Speak Up will be at 7 p.m. on February 22nd at MSUM's Comstock Memorial Union. This month, the annual Pan-African Conference at MSUM Mankato is tackling a big and timely topic, closing the gap in education and search for solutions to level the playing field for students of color. There will be speakers from Minnesota and across the U.S. The first African-American on the Minnesota Supreme Court, Alan Page, is one of the big names on the program. The conference is being held virtually this year, from February 23rd to the 25th. It's free for students at MSU Mankato, but will cost $50 for students at other schools and $75 for anyone not a student. As MSU Moorhead enters another year of the pandemic, COVID continues to affect international students trying to attend. MSUM's new Global Engagement Director, 
Umi Cheever says study abroad options for students are still on hold. International students also face challenges at MSUM because different countries have different COVID policies to get in and out. Despite these challenges, Cheever hopes study abroad options will be available soon because she can tell students miss the opportunity. Unfortunately, at this time, uh, we are not sending any students to abroad due to the COVID. However, I hear a lot of interest from the students. Although Cheever only started this position this semester, she says she's looking forward to more opportunities to engage with students. As MSU Moorhead's COVID cases lower from the 3% threshold, students and faculty reflect on returning to online schooling. Reporter Jonathan Ness talked with students on campus who say they hope classes continue to be in person. As the COVID-19 variant Omicron moves across Minnesota, MSU Moorhead celebrates a near miss as COVID cases fall away from the 3% threshold that would have forced in-person classes to go into an online format. Director of Public Safety Ryan Nelson reflects on MSUM's handling of the pandemic while warning that we are not out of the woods just yet. Um, I'm in regular contact with uh, local public health officials on a weekly, sometimes daily basis, um, state health officials uh, at least weekly, if not more often, and just kind of managing and identifying our, our rates here on campus. While COVID cases appear to be on a downward trend, the risk of returning online is still real for students on campus. Corbin Stewart speaks on how difficult it would be to return to online. While I can uh, use my own equipment to record and stuff like that, it would be a lot harder to do it myself. Corbin also comments on the quality differences between online and in-person courses. I've never done good with like online tests or online classes. Um, so especially last year, that was extremely, extremely rough. Many are left wondering what else COVID has in store for the world. Ryan Nelson offers no easy solution, simply continued perseverance. Main mitigation efforts are vaccinations, boosters, masking, and, uh, and testing. While COVID continues to leave many with a deep uncertainty, the only way out is through. With photographer Aya Takine, Jonathan Ness, Campus News. As Omicron cases continue to drop, MSU Moorhead is lowering its COVID reporting from twice a week to weekly. Two Minnesota colleges are taking new measures to protect students and employees against COVID-19. The College of St. Benedict and St. John's University will require booster shots for all eligible students and employees starting on March 1st to try to keep infection rates low on campus. Exempt students include those who tested positive for COVID in the last 90 days or are within six months of the first two COVID shots or have already received the booster. St. Benedict and St. John's will continue to require masks indoors regardless of vaccination status. As the COVID-19 pandemic continues, scientists around the world continue to study the virus. A professor at the University of North Dakota has made advancements faster than anyone. Dr. Abram Yacoub is a biomedical scientist at UND. He's received a $4.5 million grant from the National Institutes of Health to advance his COVID-19 research. The grant was awarded through the Transformative Award, which is given to those who unearth things leading to new medical advancements. More than 40 other researchers were awarded funds in 2022. It's a testimony to the great research we're doing, okay, that we're doing cutting edge research, very powerful and transformative research. Yakub says he hopes this will not only raise awareness for his research, but that this speaks to new and young scientists. MSU Moorhead is near the top of its class for online healthcare administration, edumed.org researched and ranked nearly 8,000 schools across the country. MSUM's online master's in healthcare administration program ranked second, and the online healthcare administration degree program ranked fourth. To be eligible, a school must be regionally accredited and have at least one online program in the subject being considered. The Education Department's National Center for Education Statistics says nearly two-thirds of college students took at least one online course in 2020. A Moorhead vape shop is suing the city over an ordinance it passed last fall. 
banning all flavored tobacco products. Northland Vapor Company says the ordinance is too vague and is hurting business. The ban raises the legal age to buy tobacco products from 18 to 21. Now some college-age students who used to be able to purchase these products can no longer. Moorhead City Council member Chuck Hendrickson defends his vote for the ordinance, saying it's meant to stop young people from trying to buy tobacco products. I want to curb the appetite in our schools for vaping. And I think, you know, if we can, with this um, ordinance, if we, can, if we can stop one child from not smoking or become addicted to nicotine, it's all worth it. Northland Vapor wants to either keep the law from going into effect or to be compensated by the city for lost profits. MSU Moorhead fundraised over $58 million for various upcoming projects, but most of the money will be used on scholarships for students. Reporter Katie Bartnick tells us how those funds are getting used for more than just brick and mortar. Vice President of University Advancement Gary Haugo says the money raised in the fall is already in effect and impacting enrolled students across campus. This, this fall we had distributed an additional $300,000 more than we did the previous year. Um, and we expect that to continue again this spring. So we're probably looking at an additional six to $700,000 annually. The money fundraised will also be used for different new resources across campus, such as the Von Barr Center for the Humanities, named after alumnus Thomas Von Barr. Thomas left the university a gift in excess of $4 million. 80% of the spendable amount of that fund will be for student scholarships. Along with the Von Barr Center for Humanities, the funds will also bring an alumni center to campus, which is under design right now and will break ground this spring. Half of the facility will be to basically allow us to do homecoming um, all year round and bring alums back to campus, community centers back to campus to really interact with our students. As for the impact of the Alumni Center on alumni, Hago says that it will just be a place they can call home and always come back to to stay up to date on all things going on across the university. The money raised primarily will be going towards student scholarships with the addition to helping with existing programs across campus. We always look at it as kind of the above and beyond, right? Your tuition dollars plus the support of the state give you a, a high level of education. What we want the, the donor dollars to do is really give you the, the above and beyond experience that you maybe weren't expecting. Haugo feels there's more than enough generosity and goodwill in the world, and people are more than willing to support the university when it comes to helping students. With photographer Brady Wacko, Katie Bartnick, Campus News. The MSUM Alumni Center is expected to be completed by July of 2023. High school students can now earn college credit at North Dakota State University. NDSU will offer dual credit classes starting next year. That means students can earn college credit and fulfill their high school requirements at the same time. This also gives high school students a chance to explore the majors NDSU has to offer because NDSU professors are teaching the classes. There are 15 classes in the catalog for next year in subjects like computer science and world religions with more on the way. The COVID-19 pandemic has affected the entire world in the last two years, and it only seems to be getting worse. North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum is taking action by appointing an NDSU professor to the State Health Council. NDSU professor Mark Strand is a senior scientist for the NDSU Center for Collaboration and Advancement in Pharmacy. He's helping fight off the virus in the state of North Dakota as a member of the State Health Council. Strand will be on the council for the next three years. He says he hopes to serve the citizens of North Dakota as best he can. It means a lot to me to be given the opportunity to serve the state that I grew up in and which I'm very devoted to and to represent NDSU in, in our land grant mission to serve the people of North Dakota. Strand's graduate students say that he cares a lot for his students and promotes a vision of passion in his classroom that they hope he takes to his new council position. A Minnesota college student is living the life many dream of, competing on a national game show. University of Minnesota student Emmy Harris competed on Jeopardy! National College Championship. The Nebraska native and history major is one of 36 contestants. The winner of the championship will receive $100,000. The remaining episodes are airing in primetime Tuesday through Friday until February 22nd. 
It may be the dead of winter, but UND students have spring fever. UND student government is bringing back the Spring Fever concert to the Alara Center. It will feature Grammy-nominated rap artist Fetty Wap, who gained fame in 2014 with his platinum hit, Track Queen. College students can purchase tickets in advance for $20 with a valid student ID. Tickets are $28 for general admissions and $33 the day of the show. The concert is May 5th at 8 p.m. Concordia College is holding their annual faculty art exhibit, and the art professors are getting a chance to show off their latest work. The exhibit featured the artwork of four Concordia professors. This year, assistant photography professor Chris Mortensen is one of the featured artists. His pieces have a theme of the different barriers we face in the world around us. Chris shares his thoughts on what the gallery means to him. I love the fact that we that we have a show for the faculty every year. I think it sort of serves a dual purpose. It keeps us honest and that we are continually working. The gallery this year features a variety of art in the categories of clay, oil, photography, sculpture, and printmaking. MSU Moorhead welcomed area high school students to its campus for an afternoon of art workshops and awards. Reporter Gracie Jackson takes us there to find out what students gain from attending. The Art Affair at Minnesota State University Moorhead is an annual event that students and faculty always look forward to. The energy is amazing. So when you get 250 high school students in one building and they're you know, getting to take sessions that they're really passionate and excited about, so they might take sessions where they're um, building things with clay or learning how to throw on the wheel, just all kinds of fabulous sessions for them to choose from. In addition to the day full of fun, students were invited to submit their work to a juried art exhibition at the Roland Dill Center for Arts Gallery. Their art was professionally lighted and displayed for two weeks leading up to the art affair. The show looks fantastic and the Kiwanis Club of Fargo actually sponsors the exhibition and they give out um, over a thousand dollars in awards, in student awards. And for those that got to take an award home with them, the excitement is hard to contain. It's such an amazing feeling to finally be able to see that others like my art. Kennedy Don won Best in Media Arts for her work that included an interactive pamphlet. I always try in my art to like leave a piece of myself. Taking a look around the gallery, it's obvious that Kennedy isn't the only one. I do think this year the work that's shown is, is uh, seems really kind of personal. The kids who are living every day and trying to process the world, kind of deal with politics and deal with, you know, like their life, it's a way that they can kind of have a really strong voice and it's not coming out of their mouth. Whether through pencil, clay, or paint, art has always been an outlet, a way for people to communicate what they can't put into words. With photographer Tyler Frame, Gracie Jackson, Campus News. Each student who won overall in their categories received $100. Now we turn over Jordan for a look at this week's sports. So Jordan, I hear MSUM is looking for a new athletic director? Yeah, the window's closing on a new hire. With only a month to go until a decision is made, time is ticking for MSU Moorhead to find its new athletic director. Former athletic director Doug Peters stepped down in April to take a job at his church. Chad Markison, who joined the athletics department in 2011, has been filling in. The new director will serve as a leader not only for MSUM sports, but for the Fargo-Moorhead community. The Bowlesby Sports Advisors are helping with MSUM in the search, and applications will close on February 24th. After a rough two weeks of isolation and limited practicing for Dragon Basketball, both the men's and women's teams were able to hit the hardwood once again. Reporter Josh Boyko talked with both teams to see what's changed and how they will move forward. All the sounds that come with basketball are coming back to Nemzik Hall. The pounding of the ball and the snap of the net. With a break of 14 days between game action for both of the MSUM basketball squads, conditioning and game flow can begin to be a factor as well as team focus. Uh, in a way it has. I mean, when you take some time off, it definitely halts the conditioning a little bit. The players seem to think that conditioning won't be too much of a factor with their at-home training and extra effort. I mean, other teams that we're playing are, have been playing in game-type environments, and that's something in practice that's very difficult uh, to copy. Everyone seems to acknowledge that this break could affect their conditioning if they don't stick with it and keep up their energy from before. Midway through the season, the games start to become even more important, and keeping focus is crucial to each and every game. I think us being a really close group, it really helps us focus and that when we do get to be on the court, you know, we really focus up. 
Even with the additional focus on the task at hand, succeeding at basketball requires a certain hunger and desire to win. We left from this break playing really good basketball, and so I think that's what we're expecting to do when we start playing games again. Two very determined teams, well rested and ready to breathe fire in their upcoming games. Another very important part of basketball is the mental side. We knew that COVID was going to affect our season again, so I mean it wasn't a big surprise. Momentum can always be felt in an arena, and it's clear whose side it's on. I thought we were playing pretty well for the most part, but you know I think one of the things that we're looking for is just consistency game in and game out. Coach Walthall also says that with a large majority of the team's coaching staff and players entering into the health and safety protocols, he thinks his team is good to go for the rest of the season and should be able to avoid any more cancellations from COVID. Josh Boyko, Campus News. Coaches Chad Walthall and Carla Nelson say they are hoping the worst is behind them and they are looking forward to the rest of their season without setbacks. From football to YouTube, a former MSU Moorhead football player celebrates the Midwest online. Miles Montplaisier played football for MSUM from 2011 through 2015. After graduation, he started his own marketing company with a friend called You Betcha. The social media sensation celebrates and pokes fun at all things Midwest. The first video was posted in 2018 and has over 8 million views. You Betcha has become a full-blown media company that produces videos, podcasts, and merchandise. His brother Chase is still involved with Dragons football as a wide receivers coach. The NDSU wrestling team is taking advantage of the opportunity to give back this season, but the service project is what keeps them on the map. Reporter Josh Boyko found out how a kids wrestling camp could impact the future of NDSU wrestling. Kids from the Fargo-Moorhead area and beyond came together to learn about what it takes to be a wrestler. NDSU hosted its free wrestling clinic for kids 12 and under and provided a learning experience they hope inspires the next generation. Escapes, pins, and takedowns are terms commonly known in the wrestling world. According to Nina Wentz, these camps do more than just teach her kids about the basics of wrestling. With collaborating with the NDSU wrestling program and our Bison Youth Kids, it gives my son the confidence and strength that he needs to be successful inside the wrestling room and in our community. Dozens of kids were able to attend the wrestling clinic. Here's what eight-year-old Eli Wentz learned today. Head and hands defense, we did shots, and, and stand-ups. The kids got to learn firsthand from Bison wrestlers Lathan Duda and Mason Godey. It's a dream come true, and it's also a uh, eye opener to tell kids like, like what's the difference between like the wrestling stage they're at right now compared to college wrestling, and just uh, helps helps to get them to understand like what they have to do to get just as good as we are right now. Honestly, just seeing the kids smile. Like I remember a kid, I was going to these small practices like that, just trying to get. And I always thought it was like just fun and joyful. Nick Maggie is in charge of the Bison Wrestling Club and gave us some insight on why he enjoys coaching up the next generation. There's some challenges involved with it, of course, and then the camaraderie that you get out of it by uh, being able to compete or even practice with kids from other areas. It's important. A lot of friendships that can be built. Aside from teaching takedowns on the mat, Maggie is also teaching what it takes to be successful off the mat. Uh, discipline, respect, you know, honesty, accountability. Accountability is a big thing. The NDSU Wrestling Club is determined to teach kids on the mat and off. With cameraman Jordan Austin, Josh Boyko, Campus News. The Bison continue their season hosting Northern Colorado tomorrow, February 13th. Looks like the future of Bison Wrestling is in good hands. Excited to see what these future wrestlers will accomplish. Thank you, Jordan. It's not uncommon for college students to need help making ends meet. I went to an event at MSU Moorhead catered to helping students out, but there's a twist. MSUM's campus at night is calm and quiet, but just inside the Comstock Memorial Union, students created some noise bingo! playing a classic game of bingo. What's at stake for those who win? A free bag of groceries. The Dragon Entertainment Group and the Panhellenic Association on campus hosted Grocery Bag Bingo. Bridget Grothwall is the president of the Panhellenic Association. I-25. I she says an event like this is a fun way for students to come together and play a game for a good cause. 
students. Everyone knows that college is expensive and most students aren't able to work full time and still be in school full time. So having opportunities like this is huge and can make the difference really. Maggie Sullivan was one of the winners. However, she didn't win just once or twice, but three separate times. Good, I feel really lucky. The bingo gods were with me today. <laughs> There were nearly 40 bags of groceries available to those who won. They were filled with plenty of ingredients for students to make meals out of. And 38. And for students who eat on campus, they can still put the food to good use. Um, yes, it's actually really nice just like having a couple snacks once uh, like Keezy and C store are closed and you have something in your room. It's nice to get free stuff. B4. Whether students make meals in their own homes or just need snacks in their dorms, Grathwall says one bag can go a long way. B12. Even if it's just a bag of free groceries, every little bit helps when you're a college student. At the end of the night, students won around $300 worth of groceries. MSUM offers even more resources for students on campus like the Dragon Pantry and the Swipe Out Hunger Campaign. And that's it for this edition of Campus News. We leave you with more from the MSUM Art Affair. Thank you for joining us and have a great week. Campus News is produced by the Television News Workshop in the School of Communication and Journalism at Minnesota State University Moorhead in cooperation with Prairie Public Television. <laughs>